Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to talk about all things multiplayer. Well, not quite all things, because we already have videos covering how do you create and manage your own dedicated server using your own hardware. We also have a video with respect to renting a dedicated server from a server host like my partner, Pocket Host. There is a link to them down in the description below. They're going to be able to offer up to 45 gigs of mod space at very reasonable rates. This video is going to cover how do you create a locally hosted multiplayer session, an ad hoc session, if you will, and how do you just join a general multiplayer session in general, be that dedicated server on private hardware, rented hardware, or an ad hoc session. All that is going to be involved here in the multiplayer menu. From here, we can join an existing multiplayer game. We can create our own locally hosted ad hoc multiplayer game, or we could get a link over to the Giants website and take a look at some of the dedicated server host providers if we are looking to rent a dedicated server. One thing that is important to note before you join or create any multiplayer session is what is your online name going to be reflected as? Up here in the upper right corner, we can see that my online presence name is Farmer Klein. From here, we can change that by going down here and selecting change name. This may default to the name of the user account that Farming Simulator is installed under, and that may or may not be the account name that you necessarily want folks to know when you join a session. So here you're gonna be able to possibly enter your online presence persona and be ready to connect when it comes time to do so. In this first segment, we're gonna talk about creating an ad hoc multiplayer session. So we're gonna to go to create game, and from here, we're gonna have a list of existing saves, or we could create a brand new save. We can do either. We can use an existing save that we already have on our gameplay that we're using in single player, or we can create a special save game just for our ad hoc multiplayer sessions. For this video, we're just gonna go ahead and make use of an existing save game. We're gonna be able to come in here and select our mods that we want to have active for this multiplayer session. Do note that all players must have all mods in order to join to your multiplayer session. And in this case, we have the MacDon DLC enabled. All players must have that DLC as well, as well as have the exact same version of all mods and active DLCs. If you have only Giants Mod Hub mods, well, that's not that big of a deal because when a player tries to connect, if they don't have one of the Giants Mod Hub mods, it will prompt them, do you want to go ahead and download it? It will download that in the background so that they can easily connect to your session. If you are on PC and you have third-party mods, well, you're gonna have to figure out a way to get your players access to those third-party mods that you have activated, that way they can join your session. Be sharing that on Google Drive, OneDrive, box or whatever, that's one way to do it, or simply pointing to them where you downloaded that mod so they can go and download it themselves. That will work as well. Do note, if you have any mods that have any sort of customized edits, you will have to share that customized edit with everyone so they can join your session. So that's just kind of a precautionary tale with respect to mods and multiplayer in general. Once you have selected all of those, we're gonna go ahead and click continue. And from here, we're going to define our multiplayer parameters. The game name is gonna be what your players are going to search for when it comes time to try to connect to your multiplayer session. You can come in here and you can click on this and change it to whatever you want. For example, we can change this to um, FK underscore co-op um, ad hoc, okay? and password. This is gonna be a password that your players must enter in order to join the server. I strongly recommend you put a password in here because without a password, and if you're only using ModHub mods, then literally anyone can connect to your session if they find it. And that may or may not cause problems. Just saying. Password is gonna fix 99% of multiplayer issues right out of the gate. You don't need to change the port number, but if you happen to know that you have a conflict on let's say port 10823 on your local network, then change the port number. Otherwise, leave it where it is. 
internet connection. Select the option that best fits your local internet internet connection, and that will help the game understand how well it's going to be able to sync information between you and all of your clients. Max players, you're going to have a choice between 2 and 16 players. I would say, depending on your internet connection, if you have a weaker internet connection, probably try to keep that connection to under 6 players. If you have a nice, strong internet connection, then you could go all the way up to 16, which means up to 15 other individuals can join you on a local co-op session on your system. But the more people you have connected to your system, the more of a load it will put on your system as well as your internet connection. So lag may become problematic as more players join. You have a choice between multiplayer language. You can also allow or disallow crossplay. If you turn crossplay on, then console players will be able to join PC players in a multiplayer session. If you turn crossplay off, then basically it's going to be limited to either only console sessions or only PC sessions. Basically, it's going to depend on what your platform is as to who can connect to you. Auto accept is either off or on. I would strongly suggest if you don't have a password, definitely turn auto accept off. And the reason that is, is because when someone tries to join your session, you'll get a prompt that basically says, do you want to allow X onto your session? And you're going to have a choice, yes or no. If you pick yes, then they'll be allowed to join. If you pick no, then basically they'll be denied. So that is going to be your last barrier of entry with respect to a multiplayer session that does not have a password. If you turn auto accept on, then literally anyone that tries to join your session will be allowed. Once you have done that, we can go ahead and click start. What it's doing now is it's registering your multiplayer session with the servers that Giant manages in order to basically see all of the sessions that are available. And we are loading up the save game. From there, this point on, players will be able to join your multiplayer session and work with you on your farm, just like you would on any other multiplayer. You can come in here also, even though this is an existing single player save, you can come here and you can create a new farm and well, just give it a name and everything. There we go. Now we have created a second farm. They have $100,000 in their bank. Other players can join your farm, as I said, or they can join that second farm and have fun doing whatever they're doing. When you're done playing, you're going to save the game and quit. When you do that, anybody on the session will basically be disconnected and you can then either save this save game for exclusive multiplayer use or you could load this back up in single player. Now, if you do load this back up into single player, then any farms that you created, they are going to be merged together into your single player farm. Any money in those other farms are also going to be merged into single player farms. So in theory, this could be a quick way to get a whole lot of money in single player. For example, if we come over here into our multiplayer menu once again, and we select create game, we select a brand new save, and we're gonna go with new farmer, we're gonna go starting money of a million dollars. Sure, let's just do that. All that's fine and dandy because we're not really wanting players to join. Now that the game has booted up, we're gonna go ahead and load in. And you see, we have zero dollars. Well, that's because we need to create a farm. So let's go ahead and create a farm. We now have a million. Let's create another farm. And another. And another. And another. Yeah, you kind of get the point, right? Now we have created all of the farms possible. Let's go ahead and join one of them. There we go. We have a million dollars. We are going to come down here and we are going to save the game. And at this point, we are going to exit the game. And then what are we going to do? Now, we're not going to load this back up into multiplayer. We're going to load this up into single player. Right there. That's the save game that we had. $7 million. Sure, that's all fine and dandy. Now, let's go ahead and see what our bank account looks like once this save game has finished loading up. There you go. Let's go ahead and load in. 
uh, all multiplayer game has been merged into a single farm. After saving this game, it will become a single player game permanently. Oh, lucky there, people. We have $7 million. We don't need government subsidy. We don't need any sort of money cheat. This is how you can get a whole lot of money really stinking fast in a single player game save. Now, it said it was going to basically merge it permanently into a single player game. Does that mean that you can't go ahead and load this back up in multiplayer again? No, it doesn't. Let's go ahead and prove that point. Let's get another $6 million into the bank. We're going to come here. We're going to go to multiplayer, create game, and we're going to pick the game save that we just had. And we're going to say, sure, fine and dandy. Go ahead. Let's load her on up because we don't really care if anyone can connect because no one is going to connect. Once this loads on in, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a bunch of farms, save it, exit, launch it in single player. And guess what we're going to have? Another $6 million. Yes, please. Uh, sure. Let's do it again. Let's spin the wheel again. And Wheel of Fortune says we're going to have a lot of money when we're all said and done. Save. Quit. I'll see y'all in a minute. All right. There we go. We got the same warning. And now we have $13 million. There you go, folks. I hope you all enjoyed that little bit of information. Now let's go ahead and quit back out of this and let's talk about how do you join a multiplayer game in general as just a normal player. We're gonna go to our multiplayer menu. We're going to join game. And from here, we're gonna to connect to what I call the matchmaking servers. These are the servers that Giants runs and is basically gonna keep a tabulation of every multiplayer session that is available based on all of our parameters listed right here. On the left, we have a listing of all the servers. On the right, we have a listing of search parameters. So we can see we have, well, we're showing 13,239 of 59,809 possible online games. So trying to find a list, find, try, go ahead, let's try to find our server on this list. Um, well, it might be a little problematic, right? I wish there was an easy way to limit our search. Well, thankfully there is, and this search works a whole lot better than a Giants Online Mod Hub search. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna type a name. I like to prefix all the servers that are associated with my channel, basically with FK. There we go. Now we have significantly reduced the list. Now we're showing seven of 59,858 online games at the moment. From here, it's gonna be fairly easy to find what we're looking for. We can also come here and further refine the search. Although, honestly, I suggest not messing with the rest of these search parameters. Simply using the name and typing in a portion of the known server name is going to define your list much greater than all of these other parameters. And you can actually lock yourself out from being able to find the server you want to connect by getting a little bit too particular with these multiplayer parameters. But you could say, I only want to find multiplayer sessions on Riverbend Springs, Hutan Pantai, or Zilonka. Or if you have any other maps that are in your mod folder, well, then they're going to list here as a selection under the map category. Maybe you want to only find maps that are in German. You're going to be able to do that. Japanese, Polish, etc. But we're going to leave it to English. Maybe you want to find multiplayer sessions that have a max of six players because you know that if you join a server with more than six players sometimes you get a lot of lag so you want to limit your session to six players there you go you can do that do you want to find servers that include a password or no okay so if you're just looking for i mean we could just join this one right now if we wanted to um let's see what happens we have an explanation so we go to details, and this is going to tell me that I am not able to join this server because I am missing all of these mods. See, they have the red explanation mark. And the ones that I do have are listed right here, available on the Mod Hub. So I can go ahead and go to space. And do you want to download 11 mods from the Mod Hub? If I said yes, it would go ahead and download 
the ones that are available on the mod up that I do not have. But on this particular server, well, there are several mods that are not available on the mod hub. And in that case, then these mods would not be available to me unless the owner of the server provided those to me. And therefore I would be able to connect once I had these. But the fact that I cannot get these because they are third party mods, then I'm not gonna be able to download and join this particular server. Do we wanna find games that are full or not, right? So this would only show us full games. I don't know why you'd really care about that. Only find games with installed DLCs or mods. And then only join games that allow crossplay or don't allow crossplay. I mean, if you're adamant, you don't want to play with console players or you don't want to play with PC players, then sure, you could you could say don't allow crossplay. Uh, but if you don't really care, then just leave it as it is. I'm going to join my demo server. So we're just going to go here to demo. And if we hit space, we're going to be able to see the mods that are on that server. And we happen to have all of those mods available. And all of those mods are in our mod folder. Good. Then we can go ahead and connect. We need to type in the password. This will remember the last password you type in. This does not remember unique passwords per server. It simply is going to remember the last password you used and try to use that on any server you go to connect to. Once you enter the password, well, it's going to go out. It's going to see if it can connect to the server. And once it connects, well, then it's going to load up the save game that is on the server and then let you connect. Now, there is an issue, and I don't really know the solution at the moment, that some players get to 99% and they never get to 100%. I'm going to be inquiring with Giants as to what might be the cause of that and see if I can't get some information. But here we go. We are now connected on the server. How do we know we're on the server? Well, down in our mini-map, we now have a indicator as to our response time back to the server. Right now, you can see we're looking, we are in the 30s, as far as 30 milliseconds back to the particular server. We can also come here and come down, and we're going to have these multiplayer-only menu options that are only going to be available if we are on the server. And we can log in as admin if we happen to know the admin password. I happen to know that information, so I'll be able to go ahead and type that in. Assuming I can type it incorrectly. There we go. Now we're full admin. We can create other farms and do other things however we should so wish. So guys, that is it. That is the nitty gritty of how do you create an ad hoc local multiplayer session and how do you also join any multiplayer session, be that local ad hoc by someone else, be that a dedicated server that someone is running off their own hardware or be it a rented dedicated server like the one we just joined here and it is running over at Pockethost website. So again, we are a pocket host partner. If you are interested in renting a dedicated server, I encourage you to go check them out using my link down in the description below. I have a video specifically on how to rent a server from pocket host and it's pretty straightforward and they offer instant, instant provisioning. Basically, as soon as your payment is processed, then you're going to be able to click into your server and go ahead and configure it up. You could literally be connected and playing on your server within three minutes of creating an account and logging into their website. Until next time, happy farming.